Jazz is in my heart and I need to do something with music. I got involved with Jazz's Corner even before Jazz's Corner was born. Because before it was in Lugano, another city. Uh, my father plays piano and he had a band with uh, a trumpet player. This trumpet player created Jazz's Corner, actually. So I was lucky enough to be playing drums at the first edition of Jazz's Corner. Since then I played drums every single year until I was lucky enough to take it over. <laughs> Having the right musicians that know the spirit of New Orleans, they can turn with music any place into New Orleans. President Bush came down on a taxpayer's plane with a man named Brownie with nothing in his head, Lord, and nothing in his hand. President Bush said, Brownie, man, I ain't in a shame. What we have done to this poor black man's land. Yeah, Louisiana. Oh, Louisiana, y'all. They're trying to wash us away. 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 They'll never wash us away. Louisiana, 2005. God bless you all. On the last weekend of August, we received word that a Category 5 storm had entered the Gulf of Mexico and might be headed toward the city of New Orleans. I'm a lifetime resident of the city, and I knew that there had never been a levee failure since 1927. So we were fairly confident that even if we had a direct hit from the storm, we probably would survive without too much difficulty. 
But we didn't know that portions of the levee were missing and that the levees were poorly constructed in the first place and were known to be weak. So what you saw on television, the catastrophic failure of those levees and the flooding of almost the entire city took place. And as a result, we had no city services, no fire, no police, no anything, no food, no water for six days. And some of the relief we got was coming from Europe of all places, which really amazed us since we weren't getting anything from our own government. As soon as we got communications back, we found out that the people of Europe wanted to help us, particularly bands from places like Maastricht, Holland, and uh, Germany, the Maryland Brass Band, and people like Nico Gillet, who is the director of the Escona Jazz Festival. During my travels, I, this is actually uh, one of the best. I think that the attention and the, the uh, concern for what's happening with the culture, the musical culture in New Orleans, it's wonderful. I think that you know uh, everyone has spoken to me about the music in New Orleans, and it's all been concerns of what's happening with the music. How can they support, and what what efforts you know that they can you know, participate in in helping to keep New Orleans culture alive. I shared a bandstand with Charlie Miller. It was very nice because uh, Charlie and I, as being trumpet players in New Orleans, normally trumpet players don't usually share the bandstand or play together and unless it's within a brass band situation where there's one or more uh, trumpets uh, or in a big band situation. So this was a delight and I've always loved Charlie his spirit and uh, and his his playing. This particular situation seems to be very precious, impossible to calculate how valuable this is for us, this festival, where they've funded, directly funded people in New Orleans. <laughs> For this, this
this man, uh, Nikolai, and for this festival to come forth like this and present New Orleans music here and, and actually bring New Orleans into this area here for these people and for us to be able to be here in a situation that doesn't feel commercial. It feels very, very natural, very nice and very, uh, very welcoming and very warm. Musical roots are, are really embedded in New Orleans. I have a sister, Winita Brooks, who's, a, who's a, a vocalist around town. Everybody thinks she's a wonderful vocalist. I'd like to say that as well, but I don't want to toot her haunt. And I also have a brother that's here as well with uh, uh, Dr. Michael White. His name is Detroit Brooks, who's a banjoist. And I've got an older brother that played bass as well, as I mentioned earlier. I have another sister that sings. My mom was a singer, so I've got a, it was like destined for me to play music. Nico, who's the director, he was in constant contact. He helped me out when I was um, over in Houston, living there for, I stayed there for almost a year. And he was a great help while I was there. So I'd like to say thank you again to the people of Escona for being such a great assistance to us during the time of need.
Very good uh, German band that likes to come a lot to New Orleans. Actually, they bring uh, a lot of friends to New Orleans. They really promote uh, New Orleans, New Orleans jazz. They know the scene very well. And that's why I like also to have them in Ascona combined with uh, New Orleans musicians. My appreciation for Leroy Jones, he has this, this great way of playing, His, he has this unique tone. incredible personality when he plays and after two notes you recognize him, you know, that's Leroy, I, I can feel it right away. Well, my experience with playing with uh, different musicians each night uh, during the course of the festival, for the most part, it's been very nice. Uh, it's really nice to uh, get to exchange musical ideas with musicians who are not coming from uh, the same uh, frame of reference as so, uh, the same source as I'm coming from being a musician born and raised in New Orleans. One of the people I always admired and, and, and took great pleasure in, in listening to uh, was Don Vappi, uh, who is one of the most talented people I, I know.
me it's very important in a festival like this that, that New Orleans gets a platform, you know, a platform that people can talk or just a platform that New Orleans musicians can perform and show that there's something very special, a kind of music that doesn't exist anywhere in the world and, and that it's really worth preserving it and fighting for it. I think that's why a place like Ascona, and I think this message was understood also by the director of the festival and the festival, that it's very important to give New Orleans and New Orleans musicians and New Orleans culture this kind of platform. Thank you. 
of my visit is to see friends, first of all, and to see how the city is doing. Um, and of course, to see and plan a little bit for the next festival. I used to live here uh, about 13 years ago. I left my heart here in uh, New Orleans. And after Katrina, came uh, natural for me to start a fundraising in Switzerland for all the musicians uh, and to try to get back to normality as quick as possible. And uh, now, more than one year later, I'm coming here to organize a few concerts in town and, as I said, to see how the, the, the things develop. We raised in one year over $160,000 and I'm really proud to bring this, this money over here. Right now, my situation is just like everybody else's. Um, things are a little bit uncertain here in New Orleans. Uh, I had two sisters who lost everything. And throughout the past 13 months, I've been trying to assist them as well as trying to put my house back in order, put my life back in order. Well, I think musicians need uh, several things to, to come back home and for life to be normal again. I think one of the things we need is, is to be able to come back home uh, and have uh, houses. We need housing, uh, housing situation. Uh, we need to be able to work. We need, you know, employment uh, here at home um, with, you know, decent pay. And uh, those things will be very helpful. But of course. Everyone also needs other types of basic services in the city, you know, we need to have schools for the kids, uh, you know, we need hospital uh, services, uh, insurance, um, health care, all of those are very serious issues. I'm Luca Martinelli, I'm uh, the executive manager of uh, the Jazz Ascona Festival. I'm uh, here in New, in New Orleans with a small Ascona delegation to present the, the festival. And what I would like to, we would like to do is to uh, bring, uh, um, to create more collaboration between uh, Louisiana and New Orleans and Ascona. I came to New Orleans about 20 times in my life and uh, each time it was a great experience. Each time when I was leaving New Orleans, if I thought back, what would I bring home? It's a great musical experience. So uh, after Katrina, uh, my first worry was where are musicians I know, my friends? How are they doing? How is the situation going to develop? Are they going to work? Um, so 
We started a fundraising for New Orleans musicians. And uh, that's my strong belief that New Orleans is jazz. New Orleans is this wonderful music. And uh, that's why we have to bring back all the musicians in town. It's important that we do get help, and we are getting help from around the world because many people love New Orleans and love what our culture. And, uh, and I really appreciate that, not only the money, but the prayers, the thoughts, the whole thing. Me, as a New Orleanian, as a Creole, I appreciate that. My family's been here over 100 years. The most important efforts to rebuild would be from from small efforts. Like from individuals and small groups. Uh, hundreds of little efforts, as we said, as opposed to a gigantic effort. me with my mother's house where I grew up and most of my LPs and a lot of my uh, possessions were, we had six feet of water. And with the help of Sheik and the Araby Wrecking Crew, we were able to clean out six, seven rooms of furniture which was all destroyed and came apart in the water. We did all this in two days. There's no way in the world I could have gotten that done without their help. And I think, you know, when it all comes down to it, Sheik and the Araby Wrecking Crew will probably be recognized as one of the most important efforts that happened in this time. When you do play, and uh, it comes off well, there, to me there's no feeling like that in, in the world. And uh, you know, I find that I have to have that, it, it uh, makes me tick. I do, I do not want to uh, do without it.
think, you know, there's such an incredible amount of overlooked music in, or in New Orleans, you know, and there has been throughout the years, you know, it's kind of, a, kind of stuck there and there's, a, there's an appreciation society outside of New Orleans, but in the mainstream of things, you know, there's so much talent there that's really gone unnoticed, you know, by the majority of the, the, the world public, you know. One thing that Katrina has taught me is what's really important in life. You know, material things, they come and go. You can always replace that, you know, and I'm just glad that I didn't lose anyone that I love in the storm. And of course, you know, <clears throat> we send our, our guardian angel here every year, Lillian Bouti, who is, you know, I think the single most inspirational person in New Orleans at this time, who's kept so many people going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when she walks on the stage here, I can see that she just has this instant connection with these people. Ed Frank was my brother, my piano player, my music friend, my, my buddy. That's what he was, my buddy. Ed Frank came into uh, my life in 84. I found him at the World's Fair in New Orleans. Uh, I went back to New Orleans in 85 and found Ed and realized that he was playing this piano with one hand. I didn't, I, I, I sat behind him in the tent in the World's Fair and didn't know that he was playing the piano with one hand. He was rocking. Between 1986 and 1996, Ed Frank gave me um, the best years of my musical life. Yeah.
think that it's wonderful to show the, the people here, they don't have any idea what's a gospel mass. Everybody's very curious. It's a part of the New Orleans uh, culture. And uh, Father Dadu is, uh, we gave him an award because uh, his engagement uh, for a long time for uh, uh, the New Orleans uh, uh, Afro-American uh, uh, musical scene. He always support the musician, open the doors of his uh, church uh, to the New Orleans musicians. So, and he's a great singer. <laughs> we saw him uh, in a jam session. <laughs> New Orleans, of course, is, is music. You could say the main part of the culture is music. Somewhere between music, architecture, art in the old quarter, but music is really the highlight of New Orleans, mainly because of Congo Square. The African slaves took up where the Indians had left off. And the city of New Orleans, realizing this was something good, allowed the slaves, and they put that in writing, to practice their sacred rites there in Congo Square. must maintain our culture here, our African-American culture. We must maintain our history, and we must let everybody else know about our history. And part of our history is the second line, which came from the triple concentric circle dancing uh, those Sunday afternoons in Congo Square. And to this day, you have the second line which came off that still alive in New Orleans. And we encouraged that second line. Whenever we had funerals, the second line picked up right outside the church door and went part way to the cemetery, first in the form of a dirge. A very slow, mournful thing. Like just a closer a walk with the very mournful, very slow. Until they had gotten pretty far out toward the cemetery. I practically grew up in a sanctified church, Catholic church, Methodist church. I had a lot of surroundings when I was a young kid. And the music was unbelievable. And the music and the rhythms that I heard in the Sanctified Church matched so much with the New Orleans secular beat and the African beat. It was, you know, I, I, I immediately realized that as a kid, you know, because I had grown up, you know, listening to secular music all my life. So when I went to the church and, and, and heard what was going on in the Sanctified Church, I, I immediately put the two together, you know, with the Sanctified, the rhythm and blues, the Catholic, the whole thing, you know what I'm saying? Hurricane Brass Band was invited for French Quarter Festival. We went over there and she took us to wreck Doc Watson's house. So we we really were in the ninth ward and we, we saw the mess. And I've never seen uh, it still hurts. I've ne never seen so many men cry together and, and hold their hands.
Katrina comes in when you don't even have to say her name. You know, it's something that I think it's so vivid in our hearts and in our minds. And what we want to do is not forget it. We want to fix it now. We have to try to fix it now. Katrina, uh, the devastation, uh, what it did to our city. We lost the cultural uh, cup. The only culture that we gave from America is the jazz music. And we we actually losing it. We haven't lost it yet. We're trying to save this cup from not breaking at the bottom and completely letting everything drop out. Then when the band was ready to turn back toward the church, they picked it up because it was a sign of resurrection. I started as a kid when I was 12, 13 years old, playing on pots and pans around the house. And I, as I grew older, I started following my father, Chester Ralph Jones, was a drummer. And I followed my dad around with a bunch of jazz funerals, parades, and nightclubs. And also I watched him play on the boats. And also I went around Preservation Hall and listened to my daddy perform on many, on many occasions. Uh, music is a universal language. And with the, the New Orleans jazz, you know, the, it's known everywhere throughout the world. You know, it, it, it's, uh, oh, it feels good when you do that. left the Mass, they left with all the stories of the Old Testament and the New Testament in their heads. So when they went out with the other African slaves, they gladly joined in the chants and began to mix in the Old Testament stories and the New Testament stories with the African chants. And so without realizing it, they were giving birth to the only unique art form which to this day exists in the United States. Working with people from New Orleans, it's uh, adding an extra flavor and, and an extra motivation brings it into in, into your band and uh, I always think that it brings the best in you. And I went to Loyola, Loyola University for five years and uh, graduated with a degree in musical education. And of course, that's where my degree came from, but my real musical education came from the streets of New Orleans. since I was eight years old. Eight years old. I made my own user number three tongue, which we used to bring inside to take our bath with. Okay? And I used that as a bass drum. I used a slop bucket for a snare drum. And I wanted it with a whole set of drums. 
pike covers for the symbols. And number five toe for the bees on. And a slop jaw for the snare gun. Well, I was in uh, New Orleans in uh, 2003. And uh, I got my saxophone uh, with me, of course. And then uh, it happened to, uh, to do a funeral parade. It was uh, the death of uh, blues musician Earl King. And that was a great experience for me to, uh, to play there. The musicians are like the point of a spear. If you get them feeling good, they go home and they transmit that to everybody they play for. It's amazing. I think the music part has helped the city more than anything else because people recognize the music and have, have, show, have shown us that they appreciate the music and have put the musicians to work. First off, I'd like to thank you so much for the support that you've shown the New Orleans people and the musicians from New Orleans. The city's still in the rebuild process, but we are coming back, and we want you to come and visit us. We're ready to, to, to entertain you with fantastic restaurants, great music places, music halls. We're ready for you. Just and pray. Just and pray for the world. 